your name today. Honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord. Welcome to Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. All things are upheld by the words of his power. Get ready to discover the laws that govern the kingdom of God and how those laws can be applied in your life through active faith. That is the picture of what God wants to do for you in your life. And now, Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. One thing I can tell you now is because I stayed on the assignment. I stayed with the plan that God had for me. Sometimes the things that God requested for me to do was very difficult, but I stayed with it. What's the point here? Many times when you are doing what God has assigned you to do along with it is divine help. Listen, you won't even know about certain things because you're in position. You're doing exactly what God has called you to do, where he's called you to do it. And you're operating how he's called, how, how he's telling you to operate. So that was one of the reasons why the Lord healed my body. And don't get me wrong, all of it is because of his love. But many times we have to walk with God. I did not give up. Now, I can say it this way. I was vertically aligned with the Father. In other words, I was on my assignment doing exactly what the Father wanted me to do as relates to my assignment. You know, many times people are doing things, but that's not what God called them to do. Sometimes people may be working for God in a sense, but God didn't call them to work in that particular area or that in that capacity. You know, you can be working for God and God not called you to do that. When you operate in your calling, divine health will be, is associated with it. But there's something else. If you notice how the Lord did me, he healed my body, but he left something once again for me to exercise my authority over the sugar. When you're on your God given assignment, sometimes the Lord will allow things, symptoms to come up. You are to exercise your authority. Now, listen, I didn't say the Lord caused those symptoms to come upon you. No, it's always the attack of the enemy, but the Lord will give you the grace to overcome it. Jesus said, I've given you authority over all the scorpions, the snakes, and to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Speak to that thing. If something should come up, you will be fine. Speak to it. When you are once again aligned, when you're on your assignment, let me say this. Do you know you're very valuable to God? And when he finds someone who's on his God given assignment, the Lord will back up what you're doing. Why? Because you're operating in your power and in your authority. So when you say Satan, the Lord rebuke you, the Satan will leave. He will leave. Now, let's go back. I talked about I was aligned with God. I was doing what God called me to do. If you go back to the story, that man was supposed to be was assigned to Kenneth Hagin for that trip for that revival. He saw the manifestation of his healing while he was on his assignment. We can learn a lot about this. He was assigned, he was supposed to accompany Kenneth Hagin on that revival. And as long as he was on the, in that uh, company, Kenneth Hagin, he walked in his healing. Now the Lord, I believe the Lord allowed that man to see that once again. So he can see the power demonstrated in his own body through the faith of someone else. It was enough to inspire him to say, you know, I'm going to believe God for myself. That's what this sermon is, 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 is to do to you. Believe God for your healing. But first of all, are you vertically, are you aligned with the Father? In other words, are you on your assignment? Your God-given assignment. But, there, but two, there's another thing I want you to get out of this. Not only was I aligned vertically with God because I was doing what God has called me to do, but you know what? I was vertically aligned, or not vertically, but I was horizontally aligned 
with my brothers and sisters. What do you mean, brother pastor? I walked in love with them. I made sure that I stayed in love. Even if people tried to aggravate me, I still made a point to walk in love with them. The word of God says faith operates by love. It says faith once again comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Then faith operates by love and loving God's way. Loving God's way. The Lord blessed me. Listen, I was able to love my brothers and sisters and stay in love. When we stay in love, we stay on God's territory and healing is made readily available to us. Ken Hagee used to say this, a step out of love is a step into sin. He also made this statement. He counts on his love life, his love walk, more than his confessions of faith. In other words, he said, if I have a symptom in my body, first thing I do before I rebuke anything, I check my love walk. Have I been walking in love with everyone I know? Because when we walk out of love, when we step out of love, we always open up the door for the enemy to attack us. If not us, he'll attack our children. But we open up the door for the enemy to attack us. So it is important, if you have a symptom in your body, check your love, your love walk. Are you walking in love with everyone? Are you walking in love? Are you, do you have that horizontal? Are you horizontally aligned with your brother and sisters? Sometimes, once again, we can be vertically aligned, but we're not horizontally aligned as it relates to treating our brothers and sisters with love. Jesus said, love each other as I have loved you. That is a commandment. Love each other as I have loved you. So we have to love one another. When we walk in love, healing is always available to us. Once again, the scripture says, Jesus says, I have given you authority to trample, to walk upon scorpions and snakes and overcome all the power of the enemy. It will not harm you. Listen, it is God's desire. It is his plan for us to walk in divine health. So let's look at this. If I'm not walking in this divine health, then it's something I'm doing wrong. Number one, it could be that we're not aware of the enemy's tactics or plans. The word of God tells us, at least Satan gains an advantage over us. Let us not be ignorant of his devices. Well, sometimes we can be uh, just do not know that this is an attack from the enemy. You remember Job? Job did was not aware that it was Satan who was attacking him. And y'all know that sometimes we can be just like Job, not aware who's attacking us. We think that this just happened. It just happened this way. It was just my lot in life or, you know, it's just, you know, sickness may come on anyone. You never know. No, it's always an attack from the enemy. That's number one. Number two, sometimes you can be aware of it, but you don't have enough faith to lay hold. Let me say it a different way. Perhaps your love life, your love walk is not strong enough to lay hold to the healing that's readily available to you. You see, if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters, if you refuse to forgive or walk in love with your neighbors, the enemy, you open up the door for the enemy to attack you. Someone had put it this way. As long as you're on God's property, that's the property of love. You have nothing to worry about. To speak to, to, to illnesses and it, it leaves is nothing because you're on God's property. There's a, that's a flow of love. But if you step on the enemy's property where it's hatred, it's malice, it's anger and all kind of things that's ungodly, bitterness, selfishness, then you know what? You also open up the door for the enemy to attack you. There's no healing on the enemy's territory, just like there's no sickness 
in God's territory? Is it that your love, law, your love walk is not where it should be? Walk in love and receive your healing. That's number two. Number three, sometimes we experience illnesses, sicknesses because of disobedience. Because of disobedience, we're supposed to be doing something and we're not doing it. Remember when I talked about why did the Lord heal me? Because I was doing what God called me to do. I was aligned with the father. When you're aligned with the father and your God given destiny on your God given assignment. And you're not in disobedience. When any, if anything should come up, you can deal with it easily. But if you are in disobedience to God, you open up the door for the enemy to attack you. Now, let me say this. If you're in disobedience, quickly get it right with God. In a moment of time, in a moment of time, you can be back in fellowship with the, with the Lord. And you can walk in the power and you will have the authority to trample over anything, any snake, any scorpion, anything that may try to harm you. You have the authority to overcome all the power of the enemy and that thing will not harm you. You have the power at that point. Why? Because you're back on God's side. Now, let's 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 look at it. So, number one, it could be that we're we're not we're not knowledgeable of the word of God. The reason why illnesses may come upon us or we have to deal with it. Number two is our love walk is not strong enough to lay hold to it. Our love walk is not strong enough to lay hold to what God is trying to give us, what God has already freely given us. And then number three, we're in disobedience. If we're in disobedience, we open up the door for the enemy to attack us. Now, let's dig a little deeper. And this is one of the points that God really wants me to discuss. Sometimes some people have emotionally abused their bodies. What do you mean, brother pastor? You know, you can physically abuse your body through things such as drugs and alcohol. And sometimes you may have to deal with some issues as a result of that. The word of God talks about if you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. Well, some people over long periods of time, they were, I'll say it this way, they were at a 10 emotionally. They would get angry and they would stay angry. They enjoyed being angry because when they were angry, they got people told and they looked like they got results. But because of that emotional highs and lows like that, their bodies are now suffering. Sometimes it, it may take the form of shingles where your body goes through pain if you go through a period of being angry or upset or this emotional high. Sometimes they develop other type of illnesses where their bodies will shut down because of the emotional abuse in the past. So now if they get too emotional, their bodies begin to shut down. So they have to walk in a sense of always making sure that they stay, um, I don't want to say balance, but they can't go too far emotionally. If they get too excited, too upset, and in some cases, even too happy, their bodies will begin to shut down and they'll get sick. You know, once again, the scripture says, if you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. There's no such thing as a freebie with the enemy. Young people, it will cost you to be at a 10 at all times. Your body was not made for that type of emotional dysfunction, if you will. The bodies were not was not made to hold up under that. If you're doing it, let it go for your health tomorrow. Once again, many people, they're suffering from the emotional abuse given to them. They caused on their own body because they were always at a 10. It's amazing how the body. Listen, the word of God says, once again, if you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. So now that once again, they have all kind of issues regarding this. I have good news to you, for you today. The Lord wants to heal you of that. In fact, he already has. But he wants the, this light of God's word to shine on you so you can see you don't have to walk with this. The word of God says, Jesus said, I've given you authority. 
I've given you authority over scorpions and snakes over all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Well, brother pass, I don't know about that. You see, I've been dealing with this for a long time and, and you know, it's my fault. You know, is you know, if I made my bed hard, I have to lay in it. Well, let me tell you something that sounds all right from man's wisdom, but let me say that's not the truth with God's word. That's not the truth with God. God loves you and he's, he has you listening to this message because he wants to step into your situation. Remember my situation? Every time I lay down or if I wake up in the middle of the night, I would wake up because I feel like I'm about to throw up. The Lord loved me. He didn't want me going through that. So what am I telling you? Get aligned with God's word. What are, what are you supposed to be doing with God? And ask the Lord and thank God for your healing. Before this sermon is over, we're going to pray about this. So once again, the Lord wants you, does not want you to deal with this. The word of God says it will not harm you. He's given you authority over all the power of the enemy. That emotional thing that you're dealing with, it's a harm to you. It's a nuisance to you. Some of you all, you can't even enjoy Things such as the birth of your grandchild, because if you get too excited, your body will get sick and it'll be it'll just shut down. That's not the way that God wants you to live. And forget about blaming. Forget about whose fault it is. It doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. The man with the the lame man or, 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 or the blind man. His disciples asked Jesus, whose fault that this man was born blind? Jesus said, or, or, or his parents or his, or the man himself. And Jesus said, neither, but that the glory of God may be revealed. It doesn't matter whose fault this is. If you cause it yourself, it doesn't matter. Stop blaming and receive God's love and receive God's healing. Receive it. Make sure you're number one. Well, that you know what God, know what your rights are. You know what the word says. Number two, make sure you are on your God-given assignment. And number three, make sure you're not in disobedience. The Lord is, once again, has you listen to this sermon to shed light on your situation. Forget the coping. The Lord wants to heal your body. Let me say, the, let me say this as well. Through this journey, the Lord may want to take you on a, on, on a journey to see how to deal with emotions his way. So he will forever close the door to the enemy. So after the Lord, uh, you receive the manifestation of your healing, you don't have to worry about the enemy attacking you again because you know how to govern your emotions. Now let's talk about something else. Some of you all, you are dealing with, you're enjoying the fruits of, of manipulation. The Lord has, I mean, the enemy has shown you a way where you can augment certain things, diminish certain things, change the timeline of certain things, and always present yourself as if you are innocent. You can always get people, manipulate people to get them to do what you want them to do. You are enjoying this benefit from the enemy. Now, you may not know it's from the enemy. In your mind, you think it's from you. You think you're smart. But I'm telling you now, the enemy is planning a trap for you. Some of you all, under the sound of my voice, that those who is doing this, you're already beginning to see some things that's, that's kind of weird. What do you mean, Brother Pastor? You're dealing with a little paranoia. You begin to see things that didn't quite happen that way. And when... When it was addressed, you realized that you looked at that thing all wrong. Now, why is this so? Because when you entertain thoughts from the enemy as it relates to how to manipulate people, how to get them to do what you want them to do by augmenting this situation or diminishing this situation. Let me go back. The enemy has presented this to you in a way where it seemed like it's palatable. What do you mean, brother pastor? See, the enemy told you that. You can do all this stuff without lying. My friend, a lie is not an untruth. A lie has to have deception in it. 
And anytime you augment something, a fact, diminish a fact and change the timeline of events. Let me share something with you, my friend. That is a lie because you're using that. You're trying to deceive someone to manipulate them to do what it is that they that you want them to do. The enemy is playing games with your mind. It is a lie. It is a lie. Why? Because it has deception in it. The enemy just told you that it's not a lie. Oh, my friend, it is a lie. Now you understand. Look at the enemy. He was one at one time in the presence of God. How does someone in the presence of God is able to manipulate the angels, some of the angels up there to join his side in the presence of God? How does this happen? Jesus said he's a liar. He's the father of lies. He is lying to your mind right now. It's a lie. And some of y'all, you can tell it's the enemy because you pride yourself. You feel good when you're able to manipulate people to, to get them to do what you want them to do. You feel good about it. You feel like you have power and control. You almost feel as if you're untouchable. Can I share something with you? That those are thoughts from the wicked one. That is the wicked one's residue on that situation that you feel. Stop it. The scripture says, Jesus told his disciples, love each other as I have loved you. The enemy has used this principle for his own good. What do you mean, brother pastor? The enemy is teaching you how to manipulate, you manipulate others. But what you are not aware is he's manipulating you. While you are manipulating others, the enemy is manipulating you in your mind, in your thinking. You're beginning to see the beginning of mental illness. The enemy is going to try to wreck your mind. Remember, Anytime you yield yourself, any member, anything that you yield yourself to for the enemy to work for you to gain an advantage, that's also the doorway in which the enemy will invade you. Be careful. What are you yielding to the enemy? As he gives you ideas how to and teach you how to manipulate others. Now, you can be saved on your way to heaven. It doesn't matter. You will manipulate people right there in the church. While he's teaching you how to manipulate others, he's beginning to manipulate your mind. He's going to play games with your mind. And the end result will not be good. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. So how do you deal with this? Stop manipulating people. Remember when you manipulate someone, you always have to use some type of deception. You have to augment this, diminish this fact and change up the timeline, change up the order of events to get people to do what you want them to do. This is called manipulation. And what you're doing is giving the enemy access to manipulate your mind. Once again, you see the beginning of mental illness. You become paranoid. You begin to see things in a certain way. Once again, because you're used to hearing the voice of the enemy and it didn't quite happen that way. And you begin to become embarrassed because you yielded your members to the enemy. Once again, there is nothing that is free. I want to pray for you right now. If you have these thoughts of you get anyone to do what you want them to do and is a sense of pride behind it. Oh, yeah. Those are that's the residue from the enemy talking to you. Are you working the enemy's plan? Remember, you want to be always truthful because you want people to be truthful with you. Right now, you're hearing the truth of God's word and it's shining the light. Remember, the scripture says that the word of God is alive and active. It divides between your soul and your spirit. The light of God's word is shining on your soul right now. Those of you all who have 
abused your body because of emotional, those extreme emotional highs and lows, uh, because uh, you are always on the 10. Now your body is reaping the, the, the results of that. Uh, now you have sicknesses where you, if you get too excited, your body shuts down or it, it develops some type of, uh, uh, a symptom will develop when you do that because you have emotionally trained your body and now your body is, uh, you're paying the benefits. You're, you're paying for the results of this emotional abuse that you've done through the years. I want you to know that the Lord wants to heal your body. The Lord also want to teach you how, how to live by faith, not your emotions. Your emotions was given to you to color your life. To color your life, not to lead your life. Not to lead your life. So let's pray. Lord God, we just come to you. First of all, we want to say thank you for shedding the light of your word on our situation. When your light is shining on our souls, the enemy is exposed. Now, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the answer. Holy Spirit, we're expecting to hear a word from you where you can walk us out of these binding things, these plans for the enemy, emotions to color our lives. And Lord, you're going to teach us how to use our emotions the right way. It is never to lead our lives. God, we thank for teaching us about manipulation and we see the end result. What will happen if we continue to play with the enemy's tactics or his antics? So God, we thank for deliverance. We thank for the healing of our body. God, we thank you, Lord, to everyone on the sound of my voice. They know that they know that healing is made available to them. We thank you and we love you, Lord. We walk in love. We're aware of the enemy's tactics. We walk by faith and we walk in obedience to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The word of God says once again, Jesus said, I've given you authority to trample over scorpions, snakes, and overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Walk in the authority of God's word and live the abundant life. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. We bless your name today, honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord. This has been Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. We pray that you continue to gain more insight into God's Word as Dr. Meredith shares the good news of the laws that govern the kingdom and how those laws can be applied through the active faith in your life. Remember to tune in to KJBN 1050 AM every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 AM as Dr. Meredith encourages us with Bible-based laws that will help us to prosper in every aspect of our lives. Please send all correspondence to the address on the screen. And we thank you for watching Living the Abundant Life with Pastor Samuel Meredith. We magnify your name, we glorify, and we lift up our hands to the Lord.